In this lesson, let's talk about AppSync and uh, what it can do for you. AppSync is a fully managed GraphQL service. It lets you build scalable GraphQL APIs without running any servers, as explained in the What is GraphQL lesson. AppSync performs the job of the GraphQL server and is responsible for processing requests and uh, mapping different parts of the request to different resolvers who are then responsible for fetching data from the different data sources you have in your AWS environment. Currently, AppSync supports five data sources. Firstly, you can have AppSync resolvers send HTTP requests to any HTTP endpoint, and it's a great way to put GraphQL in front of existing REST APIs, so you can keep existing UI pages where they are, talking to their own BFFs, as in backends for frontends, or maybe those pages would go straight to the backend REST APIs. But when you start to work on new UI pages, they can use the new AppSync API instead. And over time, you can gradually migrate those existing UI pages to use the AppSync API instead. And in time, you can deprecate those BFFs so everything would go through the AppSync API. At that point, you might decide to simplify how you organize your backend APIs. And if most of them are just providing some basic CRUD operations against uh, DimeDB tables, you might decide that, well, the REST API layer doesn't add a lot of value. It'll be easier to just go straight from AppSync to the DimeDB tables, especially if everything is owned by the same team and they have to change in tandem anyway. And DimeDB is one of the other four supported data sources. And if you're new to AWS, then check out the DynamoDB 101 lesson to learn more about DynamoDB. In short, it's a fully managed NoSQL database provided by AWS. It's highly performant and potentially infinitely scalable, but there are no joins, no asset guarantees, and it can be difficult to do complex queries sometimes unless you have put a lot of thought into your assets patterns. And then there's also RDS or Relational Database Service, where AWS manages a lot of the infrastructure for running relational databases like MySQL or Postgres. And you get a full power of SQL and have a lot more flexibility in terms of how you can query your data. But you do end up with a lot more infrastructure you have to deal with compared with DynamDB, like all the VPCs and the network configuration. And the AppSync integration only works with data APIs for Aurora serverless databases as well. So not all RDS databases are supported. If you need the full text search, then AppSync also supports Elasticsearch. That is the hosted Amazon Elasticsearch service. You can map GraphQL operations straight to an Elasticsearch query, which is very useful if you need to build search features into your application. For anything else, you always have Lambda where you can write functions and connect your AppSync API to any other service. It can be other AWS services or even other SaaS services such as Algolia, which we're gonna use later in the course. So AppSync itself is very scalable. You can easily support millions of users and your AppSync API is deployed to multiple availability zones out of the box, which gives you a great baseline for resilience. That said, it's worth keeping in mind that all AWS services have some built-in limits. And here are some of the main ones to think about with regards to AppSync. There's the maximum execution time of 30 seconds and that the GraphQL schema itself can't be bigger than one megabyte. Both of these are hard limits, so you can't change them. There is also a soft limit on the requests per second, which is a thousand. But being a soft limit, it's fairly straightforward to raise this limit just open a support ticket or go through the service quotas console to apply for race there. With AppSync, you only pay for what you use at the $4 per million query or mutation operations. Even if AppSync has to run multiple resolvers for a single query operation, that still counts as one operation. Whereas with REST APIs and the API Gateway, because of the underfetching problem, the equivalent request might translate to several HTTP requests to API Gateway, which would easily end up being more expensive, even though on paper, API Gateway is cheaper than AppSync on a per million request basis. With GraphQL, since every request goes through the same entry point, so you can't just cache everything by the URL, which basically rules out caching at CloudFront. 
Luckily, AppSync has got built-in caching support, which charges you extra depending on the size of the cache node you choose. Essentially, you're going to be paying for uptime for a memcached node, but the good news is that the cache node itself is fully managed. And you can either cache the whole request, or you can cache the result for individual resolvers. AppSync gives you a lot of room to mix and match here, and a good caching strategy can make a world of difference for performance, scalability, and cost, especially when you're running at the scale. We'll dive deeper into caching later on in the course. AppSync also has built-in monitoring and the logging support through CloudWatch metrics and CloudWatch logs. And you get high-level metrics like number of API requests, error count, and latency, which is great, but unfortunately, all of these are aggregated at the API level. So you can't tell how well each resolver is performing and when there is a problem, which operation and which resolver is the problem. And to get more information about what's actually happening on the request, you need to enable logging and at least for the dev environment, set the field resolver log level to all so you can get information about what's going on inside the resolver and how well each resolver is performing. This way, you can narrow the problems down to specific requests and the resolvers. But given how much logs AppSync can actually write to CloudWatch logs, this can be also a problem in production environments in terms of the volume of logs it's producing and therefore how much you end up paying for CloudWatch logs, which is why it's usually disabled by default in a production environment. We we'll talk more about logging and how you can instead sample these resolver logs in production later on in the course. And for debugging performance problems, you can also enable X-Ray, which really shines the light on what's happening under the hood and shows you where the time is taken in the request. And you can see that this single query has resulted in quite a few DynamoDB calls behind the scene. And you can see how long each of these requests took. And also which of these requests are made in parallel versus sequentially. And X-Ray also shows you a service map so you get a high level view of which services your AppSync API is talking to and their overall health. And AppSync gives me all of these capabilities and I don't have to manage any servers. So I can really get a lot of things done quickly. In fact, I found myself so productive with AppSync on a recent client project, I built a backend for a new social network in just a few weeks. With GraphQL and serverless technologies like AppSync, Lambda and DynamDB, we can all become super productive and get things done much faster. And that's what I want for everybody.